Hello students, welcome back to our science video. For today's topic, we will discover the different parts and function of the human respiratory system. We will also link the importance of respiratory system in sustaining the functions of the other body system. At the end of this video, viewers are expected to describe the parts and function of the human respiratory system. To start this lesson, let's define respiratory system. Respiratory system is the network of organs and tissues that help you breathe. It includes your airways, lungs, and blood vessels. The muscles that power your lungs are also part of the respiratory system. These parts work together to move oxygen throughout the body and clean out waste gases like carbon dioxide. To attain this function, let's describe and discuss the different parts of the human respiratory system. The nasal cavity is a large, air-filled space above and behind the nose in the middle of the face. It serves as the initial or first passageway of air that we breathe. The nasal cavity functions to humidify, warm, filter, and act as a conduit for inspired air as well as protect the respiratory tract through the use of the mucociliary system. The nasal cavity also houses the receptors responsible for olfaction. Here is the location of the nasal cavity. To proceed, pharynx is the common passageway of both food and air. How it becomes possible? Using this diagram, we can see that the trachea and esophagus comprises the pharynx, wherein Trachea is the passageway of air that we breathe after the nasal cavity, while esophagus, which is part of the digestive system, serves as the passageway for food. Another special part of the respiratory system is the presence of glottis and epiglottis. To know its function, let's look on its structure. Glottis opens into the trachea and is responsible for the production of sound while the epiglottis is a cartilaginous flap on top of the glottis that prevents the food from entering into the trachea. The main difference between glottis and epiglottis is their function and the structure. This is also the reason why we are not allowed to talk while eating, because the food might enter into our trachea that will make us experience choking. But to prevent us from choking, our body usually do coughing in order to bring out or release the food that enters the trachea. Next is larynx. Larynx is also known as the voice box because the vocal cords are located in the larynx. Larynx produces the sound because the vocal cords control the size of the opening of the glottis. It controls the amount of air that is needed in order to produce sounds. In males, voice box or larynx is really prominent. We can identify the location of our voice box since it is being protected by a thyroid cartilage known as the Adam's apple. It is also the reason why males has deeper voice than females. Next is windpipe or commonly known as the trachea. Trachea has rings of cartilage in its wall that keeps it open. It is also lined with cilia. Since, nasal hair cannot fully filter the air that gets inside our nasal cavity, so the trachea serves as another filter. In our body, windpipe or trachea is also in the same location with the food pipe or esophagus. Same location, but it serves different function. The lungs are a pair of spongy, air-filled organs located on either side of the chest. This is also the major organ of the respiratory system and divided into two lobes, the left and right lung. Lungs are covered by a delicate membrane called flura. The flura is vital part of the respiratory tract whose role is to cushion the lungs and reduce any friction which may develop between the lungs, ribcage, and chest cavity. 
the pleura consists of a two-layered membrane that covers each lung. The bronchi function to carry air that is breathed in through the functional tissues of the lungs called alveoli. Bronchioles are air passages inside the lungs that branch off like three limbs from the bronchi. The bronchioles deliver air to tiny sacs called alveoli, where oxygen and carbon dioxide are exchanged. Alveoli is the endpoint of the respiratory system. It has very thin walls and also serves as the site for respiration. But why does it have very thin walls? The alveoli are where the lungs and the blood exchange oxygen and carbon dioxide during the process of breathing in and breathing out. The alveoli are surrounded by tiny blood vessels called capillaries. The alveoli and capillaries both have very thin walls which allow the oxygen to pass from the alveoli to the blood. The capillaries then connect to the larger blood vessels called veins, which bring the oxygenated blood from the lungs to the heart. The organs of the respiratory system need to be protected. The rib cage is the arrangement of ribs attached to the vertebral column and sternum in the thorax of most vertebrates that encloses and protects the heart and lungs from external injury. And the muscle that helps us in the process of breathing is what we call the diaphragm. The diaphragm is a thin skeletal muscle that sits at the base of the chest and separates the abdomen from the chest. It contracts and flattens when you inhale. This creates a vacuum effect that pulls air into the lungs. When you exhale, the diaphragm relaxes and the air is pushed out of the lungs. To test your knowledge, I prepared a simple assessment for you. This assessment is entitled, Label the Parts. Pause this part of the video for a while. Then try to identify the different parts of the human respiratory system. While identifying, try also to recall the function of each part. You may write your answers in the comment section below. Excellent! Here are the answers for the assessment. I hope that you really understood the different functions of each part of the human respiratory system. Thank you for listening. Do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more science educational videos.